to another episode of Pinal's People. We are here today at the beautiful Casa Grande Art Museum with our guest, Regis Summers. Regis has served on the Casa Grande Arts and Culture Commission for years and has also been a longtime member of the Casa Grande Art Museum's board. She has been involved in helping make a host of local art initiatives happen, including the mural at the Velocity Skate Park and the local effort to install a mosaic as part of the revitalization efforts of the Union Pacific Railroad underpass along Hilo Bend Highway. Regis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, so to start off with, you know, um, I know locally you're really well known um, for a lot of the initiatives that you've helped. Uh, kind of get off the ground over the years. Um, but for our audience members who might not be familiar with you, can you share a little bit about your journey into your work with the Arts and Culture Commission um, and the Casa Grande Art Museum? Yes, uh, born and raised right here in Casa Grande and plan to stay here, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, growing up, I was exposed to art with my mom and my grandmother. They were very creative women. And, but as you are in grade school and high school, you know, that becomes back center. And when I got into college is when I really grasped the concept of, of what art is and what, what it can bring to you personally, um, spiritually and emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's when I really embraced um, being able to work with the arts then I got married and had the opportunity to um, become part of the Arts and Culture Commission, formerly known as Arts and Humanities, and also then purchase a store, uh, which was Gilda's Artistic Creations, which was a custom framing store. And then we changed the name to Old Town Custom Framing because we were in historic downtown, which we loved. Mm -hmm. um, that's another passion of mine is the revitalization of these beautiful buildings that we have in our area here, in which I call the hub. And <clears throat> the spokes are out here, and the hub is right where we're sitting. Mm -hmm. And um, I have enjoyed every bit of framing beautiful art that has come over my tables and, and to be able to frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so tell me a little bit about what got you involved with the art museum as you can see here we're here at this beautiful location we have a lot of beautiful artwork around us and it's all thanks to you um, so can you tell me a little bit about you know what got you involved someone approached me and came into the frame shop and approached me if I wanted to sit on the board and mm -hmm. absolutely I did mm -hmm. and that's how it started and we have some dedicated members um, to the board over the years we have an original board member is Carol uh, Farrington and she's still on the board today and she is in love with this art museum as much as I am and the rest of the board mm -hmm. and we couldn't accomplish what we've accomplished with this museum in the last 10 years if we did not have the art association that helped us so much with the grounds and fundraising and to, to create what this beauty is today Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, over the last few years, and I kind of briefly mentioned this earlier, but um, over the last few years, you know, we've seen a lot of local art initiatives kind of uh, crop up around town, whether that's the underpass, like I mentioned, and the um, beautiful mosaic uh, that was done by Lisa Swanson out there. Um, we've had, like I mentioned, the mural. Um, and then you mentioned off camera too the utility boxes. Yes. Um, so can you talk to me a little bit about uh, you know what's made you want to be a part of those projects and help support um, you know getting local artists and local art into the public eye. And I believe it's being born and raised here as 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 a, you know a Casa Grandian and knowing what sits out there and that we haven't touched all of. The artistic uh, visions that are dancing in those heads of the artists that live in our community mm -hmm. and having these initiatives the underpass project was you know it was huge because there's a huge mural on it the metal art the mosaic um, i traveled underneath that 
back and forth. I had a job that had I had to go that way that was um, past Thornton Road. And it was like, you know, it was sad. Mm -hmm. You know, and as a child, you know, I grew up going in and under the, the mat. I'm going to take that out. But, <laughs> but you know, <clears throat> so then uh, with I had had a meeting with Gloria and Erica Herman, who sit on CG Mosaic. So we had some funds left, and we spoke, and Gloria said, we need to do something. I said, she said, let's do the underpass. I'd like to see that done before I retire. I said, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Erica said, let's do it. And that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And it took us four years, uh, and get funding from Arizona Commission on the Arts, uh, from the city of Casa Grande, who we're grateful for, because it could not have been completed without them embracing that last kickstart of getting that thing done. Mm -hmm. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'd love for you just if you could speak to a little bit, what do you believe is the value of having, um, you know, these beautiful works of art, and, you know, they're very much dispersed throughout the community. Um, so what do you think that brings to the table for the community? Especially as you're driving, and that's the whole, the underpass and the utility boxes, because that's all, while you're in your vehicle, you're able to see those. And there's children who have, we have seen, and the, the kids are the ones who get excited about the utility boxes. Mm -hmm. You know, because they oh my gosh. And they make their parents stop and look at the utility boxes. Um, that's because what it is is we're kind of like an art gallery mm -hmm. and, and that's what I envision is that we have we create this art gallery within our city that you can travel through the city and the Commission is also working on that on a map mm -hmm. that you can go here um, you go there and look at the different um, artwork that has been done uh, throughout the years with the Commission yeah. Uh, the other one I was really excited about were the sculptures we put out at the uh, community center on Perk Road. There, I literally cried when they brought those sculptures <laughs> in because uh, it was just amazing. Because the sculptures are of children, and what sits in the community center is the Boys and Girls Club yep. with those children. And I'm an advocate for children and art because we have children who don't have access to art and art supplies and but those little visions are dancing in their head mm -hmm. hopefully when they pass a utility box and they think I can paint that but they don't have the canvas nor the paints nor the tablet in order to draw what is dancing in their head yeah. and so that's the mission of the commission Ooh, like that <laughs> you know to to make sure and it'll be my mission after I am no longer serving on the commission is to make that children have access mm -hmm. to art supplies and be able to display their art. Yeah. And I have to give kudos to Pinal 40. They are a nonprofit group that gives scholarships to future farmers um, and um, students in our, going into agriculture. But they have funded art camps for our children at risk here in our city. And I'll be forever grateful to them as they continue to do that for us. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you had kind of touched on this a little bit, and I know off camera we had touched on this as well, but, uh, you know, from all of the initiatives, from clean air um, to, uh, um, uh, you know, the upcoming plans that the Arts and Culture Commission has, um, what are you most excited for um, to accomplish this year? You know, I have to say right now is being able to do as many utility boxes as we can mm -hmm. because there's there's two uh, aspects to that. Some of them are owned by APS. We were the pilot program for APS for the utility boxes, and now the city uh, at the corner where there's stoplights, there's utility boxes there that give electricity to those lights. So the next seven will be city owned boxes. 
-hmm. but I'd like to see them on every corner. They need to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's because it becomes a huge, like I said, a huge art gallery, a huge campus that when you're stopped at the stoplight, as you well know, traffic is, it is what it is. You're backed for a while, you're backed up. Yeah. And then you get to view that beautiful art. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what I'm most excited for too. Mm -hmm. And the other project is the north side of City Hall is a plaza that we're working on that it would become a, a community gathering place. And um, when that happens, I'll give you more details about that. But it would be a great place to come for community members, for employees of the city to come and have lunch and be able to sit back where it's just beautiful back there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you know, so uh, we had mentioned you owned a frame shop. Yes. Um, for you know years, as I understand. Um, and I, you know, I had read about this actually in a story that was a profile that was done on you. But um, you know, you were you were kind of someone who you would get these artists who would come in yes. for the work and stuff, and you would sort of make these connections. And I'm I'm curious to know, you know, what was it? Why did you feel it was important to start developing those connections and build, you know, kind of this network um, of local artists? Uh, one example is James Van Fossen. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a local artist, and he came into the shop and he did um, uh, pencil drawings of western scenes, cowboys, rodeos, uh, beautiful things, and he came in and they were amazing. But he was working full time, and but you know wanted to be a full time artist, which is very hard to do. Um, it just just doesn't happen easily. Yeah. So I said, well, why don't you just come and be an artist in resident here? Just come in on your days off, sit on. We had a great sitting area with couches, and I said, come in and sketch. Mm -hmm. So he did that for a few months, and so as people came in. You know, they would watch him and say, oh my gosh. You know, so then he was being paid for his art, uh, which he was before, but now it was more substantial because there was people coming in and out of the frame shop and watching him. Then we started a thing with him. It was called um, 20 Minutes with James that he, someone would come in and he would sketch them mm -hmm. because my belief is you have a sketchbook, if you're an artist, you sketch every day. Yeah. 30 minutes a day, you sketch. You can paint it with watercolors, acrylics, oils, whatever you want, pastels, whatever, but sketch every day. Mm -hmm. It brings out more of what is in your head and, and pencil and paper don't lie. Yeah. You know, so, um, so James um, was sitting on the couch one day and my daughter is a, was a model for Duffy Sheridan, who is a world-renowned artist. Um, Google that and you'll see what happens. So I did a lot of Duffy's framing for his um, artwork. And um, so there was a piece of Duffy's art showing in a gallery up in Scottsdale. So I said, James, come on, we're gonna go up. My daughter was with us and I said, let's go take a look at this art. So I said, bring your portfolio. So he brought his portfolio with him and we hopped in the car, we go up there, we go from gallery to gallery to gallery and make him show his portfolio. Oh wow. A gallery picked him up. Oh yeah. And it has been nonstop since. Mm -hmm. And um, that is one of my greatest, because here was this passionate artist who thought he'd just be working, you know, nine to five every day. And then on weekends, being able to show his art somewhere, but here he was, and what he's become today is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And just love that, that he's been able to accomplish that. Also we have many artists that have come in the store that were young and amazing artists. And I said, just keep going. Another artist that came into my shop, a local artist is Erica Herman. Mm -hmm. So she comes in and she is the most vibrant person 
And so she brings in and I said, oh my gosh, just bring him into the store. And I let artists for free, you can bring him in and you can sell them. I mean, that was like free decoration for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just, and bring it in and we'll see if it sells. And that's how she's got started. She's won the Governor's Award. She is an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so happy for her. And it's just embracing what we have in this community uh, for artists. You know, uh, the, the other one is we have our contest through Cesar Chavez that are through the, for the youth, amazing art. I was a judge for the Congressional Art Contest for Congress. Um, amazing art for Pinal County. Um, I, like I said, I will always advocate art for the youth. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I got to frame these beautiful pictures and get paid for it. Yeah. You yeah. know, some of them I wish I could keep, but I couldn't. <laughs> That's incredible, though. Um, what a beautiful story. And so, <clears throat> you know, you, we were actually just talking about this. You had mentioned, um, you know, your your work, especially, you know, like you said, the mission of the commission is to support arts, um, mm -hmm. especially for young, for young kids. Um, so as somebody who's been a long time advocate of the arts, um, what would you say is the most valuable, um, you know, thing that working with art and other artists has taught you? It's taught me about, about patience mm -hmm. because it is a, a long process sometimes from getting from point A, from that first drawing, you know, to selling that drawing. Uh, it's, it, I like to see the journey from the beginning to the end. Some of it's amazing and some of it's sad. Mm -hmm. But you keep going because there is someone out there that's going to embrace your art. Mm -hmm. You know, um, another big thing for me is art does not have to match your sofa. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and surround yourself with whatever you love. Mm -hmm. Be it landscaping, be it abstract, be it whatever, uh, basket weaving, whatever. Surround yourself in your home with that. So when you walk in, you smile. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. All right, uh, Regis, just a couple more questions for you. Got a little emotional on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, pre be prepared because these last two questions, a lot of people have been getting emotional. All right. So, as you think about everything you've accomplished with the, uh, you know, CG Art Museum, um, the Arts and Culture Commission, um, what do you hope is, you know, when you when you get ready to walk away from? What do you hope is the biggest takeaway that others get from seeing everything you've, you've done? The biggest takeaway is just never give up. If there's no funding, you'll find the funding. Mm -hmm. You know, if their artists are not coming and, and you know, submitting, um, they will come. There's, you can talk to somebody and they'll say, wait, I know somebody. And the biggest thing is that, is that in the future, is as they drive around Casa Grande, you know, with their map from the commission, you know, that they are exposed to so many different kinds of art. And, uh, and to get back real quickly to the skate park, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I love that kind of art. When a train goes by and you see all the graffiti, mm -hmm. I, We'll wait for a train because it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and other people see it as what's the word I'm looking for? They look at it as tagging. They don't. Look they don't look at it as art. Mm -hmm. And certainly there is tagging, and that's just with the initials or whatever, you know. But now they call it street art because you they the word um, is frowned upon when you say it's graffiti art. Mm -hmm. um, Phoenix. Uh, Downtown Phoenix has taken that on. Um, if you travel downtown Phoenix of the murals from graffiti artists is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you talk about that, somebody bring, bring the tears to your eyes, it's that. Yeah. yeah. That you see that the community embrace these people who were doing it at night and in the dark. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're in the start. Now they're in the light. Yeah. And 
that's what I'd like to see too, is bring those artists that are, are in the dark mm -hmm. and bring them out and let them put their artwork on walls, on sidewalks, mm -hmm. wherever there's what we would believe is a canvas and let them do what they want to do. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. So Regis, I'm super excited to ask you our final question. Um, if you were to reflect back, you know, many, many years from now, um, on a future where you've accomplished everything you could have possibly thought of with the Casper and Art Museum, with the Arts and Culture Museum, or uh, Arts and Culture Commission, with local arts initiatives here in Casper and Graham, um, if you were to think about that future for a moment, what does it look like to you? What it looks like to me is is hopefully that the youth becomes more and more and more involved in um, sitting on different commissions and art groups and um, that they embrace what I have embraced over the years. And, and it, it is coming because we have great programs at Vista Grande and Costa Grande High School of uh, art students. Will they leave our city? Yes. But what I, what I hope for is that they will come back and bring again what dances in their head into our landscape. Yes, that's incredible. And, and art is an emotional journey. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it makes you happy, it makes you sad, it makes you think, it makes you do so many things. Um, and it's teaching these children and adults, adults who maybe are just coming into uh, what art is, is letting them know the many emotions that an art piece can bring to you, as you see in these walls. You know, as I walked in this morning, you know, I'm captivated and, and thinking what was the artist thinking for this certain painting and that certain painting. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it is a it is a journey, yeah. and one I am willing willing to buy a ticket to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible, Regis. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you. Beautiful having you on. Thank you. Thank you.